to you live from 24th Street in San Francisco, California. Welcome to The Art Show. With Sir Ron Norris and Brendan Metcalf. All right. Hello, hello. My name is Saran Norris. You might know me from shows like Bob's Burgers and, and Bob's Burgers. Other than that, I paint all kinds of murals and uh, I paint blue bears that are right there. Mr. B, Brendan Metcalf, the last time we'll officially ever say that name, we're going to refer to you as Mr. B. Mr. B, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, so my name is Brendan Metcalf, also known as Mr. B. I've been working with Saron for a couple months now, but I basically run all of the uh, educational programs for him after school, all the teaching, and every now and then I'm help, help him out with projects too, but I'm just here to do what I can wherever I can. And thank you everybody right. for being here too. Right on. We thank you for everybody for being here. Uh, we're really excited. This is our first live show. Uh, Mr. B, are you pumped for this right now? I am beyond excited. I am excited to, you know what, this is episode two, so this is a big deal. Uh, Roy, shoot me up to uh, just one person, camera one right now. Uh, everyone, listen, right now, all I want to do is explain to you like really why I'm doing this. I have a little bit of free time. I'm super busy. I have a big team. We're always doing stuff. But like right now, I decided to take the past couple weeks and do this. I could have made a painting, but I decided to do this, okay? So all I want to do is share okay and i'm here to learn i'm here to teach at the same time but at the same time i want to bring people on artists on and i want to learn from them it's called the art show listen being an artist is the easiest thing in the world that you have to do all you have to do is literally call yourself one okay so i want to explore that i want to talk about that and definitely i'm going to curate the artists that i have on here but i want to teach and i want to learn and the kind of motto of the show is is that we're here to learn okay well, Mr. B, uh, are you ready to start this show? Absolutely. You know what, everyone? I'm about to start the news. And now, the news. News, news, okay, 2020 is on record for being one of the hottest years ever, probably also the worst year ever, and probably for some people, the most boringest year ever. On new news in San Francisco, you can now get haircuts outside. That means nothing to me. What does mean something to me is Biden-Harris 2020. Uh, my three dogs just turned three. So happy birthday to Carpet Milk and Obama. Now, we have a brand new weather correspondent. I'd like to send it over to Ratty Neal. He has his rat eyes and ears on the street. Take it away, Ratty Neal. Thanks, Ryan. By the way, am I getting paid for this? Eh? All right, here we go, weather time. Currently, we're in the low 60s with wind speeds at about 20 miles per hour. And humidity, 78% chance. 5% chance of rain throughout the day and into the evening. At 6 p.m., we may have a little sunshine if you're lucky, boys and girls. Wise ones. All right, thanks. Back to you, Saran. Hey, pal. Ben Mo. Wow. Uh, mostly you should be impressed with how quickly I changed my clothes. Other than that, I want to thank the Ooze Element crew for lending us Ratty Neal. We love his presence in the studio and he's been great to the news. So we look forward to hearing more from Ratty Neal. We had Ratty Neal show up often in summer camp, huh, Mr. B? Mm -hmm, all the time. He did, but you know what? The kids actually thought that that was me and that I would go back and actually be Ratty Neal. Uh, he couldn't convince him that was, but yeah, no, he is a real person. And to be honest, after listening to that weather forecast, I wouldn't believe a thing that he says. Okay, now everyone, I, I I think it's a moment, Mr. B. Do you like stories? I love stories. Do Do you have one for us? You know what, Mr. B? I got a story, but you know what? I'm just gonna give you a little bit and then we're gonna share it because I don't want anybody to fall asleep because it's kind of like a bedtime story. It's kind of like a fairy tale. I'm excited. Or, or is that in an, uh, we'll talk about it later. Okay, you know what? It's story time. Presenting The Blue Bear, written, drawn, and read by Saran Norris. 
Welcome to Berica, home of the Blue Bears. What a lovely place to live. And with so many traditions, the Blue Bears love spending time celebrating their culture. Oh, look out. The rabbits have flown their rabbit ship into Berica. Looks like the rabbits are planning something. Wow. The rabbit ship dove down and started scooping up all the blue bears. The rabbit stuffed as many blue bears as possible into the rabbit ship and flew away to Rabbit World. Welcome to Rabbit World, a wonderful place filled with the most beautiful castles and large colorful trees that bear the most delicious fruit in the entire world. The rabbits use this strange fruit to sell, bringing a mass of riches to everyone in Rabbit World. The rabbits have always used the blue bears to help them harvest the seeds from the fruit to sell around the world. When the stolen blue bears land in Rabbit World, all the blue bears are awfully confused and scared. The blue bears are then rushed into Big Bobby's Bear Shop, where they are forced to work for the rabbits and in return will get only fruit to eat. Many blue bear families are often split up from their parents. The fathers and mothers go to different rabbit families other than the children. Whoa, riveting. Uh, uh, that's an allegory that we're kind of setting up here. I, I can't wait to see how it ends, if it ever does. Okay, uh, you know what? Mr. B, mm -hmm. do you feel like drawing, dude? That's what I'm here for. You are here, dude. You're such a great artist. This is what I want you to do, man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw one thing, and then you're going to draw another thing. You still need to kind of follow what I do, but I need you to kind of do your own style, do your own expression. If anybody watched episode one, which only 51 people did, which that's cool, but if you did, we did protest art, or at least we did cartoons that, drew, that were protesting. So I want to kind of keep that theme going on because I'm kind of down with that kind of stuff. You cool with that, Mr. B? Absolutely. Is there a mouse in your house or something like that? I'm uh, <laughs> looking around. Okay, you know what? Roy, you know, uh, Roy Robles, he's in our, he's in the control room. He's in Mission Control. He controls everything, along with my assistant, Annabelle Fuentes. Annabelle, Annabelle Fuentes, can you come and say hi to the group, please? Hey, everybody. Welcome Woo! to the show. If anybody has ever sent me an email, uh, more than <laughs> one straight to Annabelle Fuentes. She has been my assistant. She was also one of my high school students. She is also me and Mr. B's sounding board. Uh, we don't do anything unless running it by her. Uh, that means that- uh, uh, You two are very smart men. Yeah, but you're also <laughs> hypercritical. Okay, let's get Annabelle away. Let's get Annabelle away. Bye, Annabelle. Okay, now, this is what we're gonna do. I need Roy to shoot my hands, and I'm about to do an art lesson. Mr. B's gonna contribute too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. And now, an art lesson. All right, and now, an art lesson. All right, uh, Roy, you've got give me camera two, camera two and hand camera, boom. All right, here we go. Okay, this is what I wanna do. Let's do some protest art here. Let's draw a character holding a protest sign. So what I'm gonna do is, I hope everybody had a chance to at least get a pencil and some paper, or maybe you can do it on an iPad. Let's pop this out real quick. Okay, this is what I wanna do. I'm gonna start out with the head. I want my character to be protesting, so my character's gonna be uh, uh, kind of uh, a little angry, you know? Uh, have a little uh, uh, anger to his little, uh, kind of uh, forcing it down, forcing this like expression. So I'm gonna have my character kind of looking down a little bit. I'm gonna have my kind of eye line curved. So his head's looking down. I'm gonna create my eyes. Now listen, let me talk about this here. We have comments on YouTube and Twitch. So if you feel like we are going too fast or if you wanna uh, maybe request anything that Mr. B is gonna draw for you, not me, <laughs> uh, please feel free. Or uh, if you have any comments whatsoever, we're actually gonna throw those over top of the screen uh, so we can actually kind of respond to them. So feel free to comment. 
I'm gonna move forward on this illustration here. I have these uh, eyes right here. My character is super kind of focused, you know, really trying to send energy. I'm gonna bring these bottom eyelids up and bring my eyes in here and my brow down. You know what? It's bear day, so I'm making bears here. So I'm gonna make my bear, my bear's head is down, so I'm gonna make sure that these ears are kind of uh, on top of the head, so they're a little bit back. Now my bear has a little bit of a contour right here on the side of his face, so I'm gonna kind of bring that out a little bit. Just finish up his head. Okay. I always like to go ahead and do uh, the nose after this, really kind of get that placed in there. I always like to have that little wrinkle in there. Nice little line down there. I'm gonna get this mouth, boom. Okay, get that real funky. You know what? Let's see what Mr. B got. Mr. B, what's what's Mr. B got? Look at this camera. I'm doing a little oh, bit of it. You can't see it too well, but I can see it. Close enough. All right. I got too many pieces of paper on this. There we go. Okay. Moving forward, I want to try to create this sign. So what I'm going to do is get my hands, focus right on my hands. I'm going to draw a straight line right across. And just kind of make a nice sign. We're teaching cartoons with the message. Okay, now I need to show a little bit of this character's shoulders. Depending on the weight of your character, that can be wider, shorter, skinny, Ricky! I love Ricky, that's my brother right there. Okay, now, I this is the cool thing, right? Hands are the hardest thing to draw when uh, you're drawing cartoons or people or anything like that. So uh, what's cool about this drawing right here is that you can just draw the little fingers and hold this sign and not actually have to draw too much. Too much and get into all that nonsense of those fingers. Just make sure the middle one's like kind of the longest one. All right. Now, all we have left is the legs, okay? So I'm gonna make this one kind of straight out. Everything is covered up. So this is what's cool about this drawing is uh, you can kind of draw a character process and you don't have to put that much work into it. All right, I'm gonna draw some, uh, some shoes, you know I like to draw my shoes. Hey Roy, uh, you know what? Blue Bear, what do you think about the drawings that we're doing right now? Do you like them? Oh! Uh, so uh, we're gonna keep going here. I'm gonna draw this, this shoe right here. So far, the Blue Bear is feeling it. Um, okay, so I got my feet right here. I got one more. Let's put a little, woo! Uh, let's put a little, yeah, you know it, you know it. Okay, I'm gonna put a little little bend in the leg right here. All right, let's just put a little bit of action in there. All right, and let's get this foot in there. All right, now listen, I, I'm gonna put Black Lives Matter in here right now, but like, listen, you could be in the fish, or the trees, or I don't care, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is all for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna do this right now, okay? Because this is what I'm feeling. But like, if you're feeling something else, listen, I'm here to give you art that has utility. So if you can find something useful for this, that's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm feeling the art lesson is over. Mr. B, what do you got? What are you gonna put in your what are you gonna put in your uh, um, in your protest sign? Same thing. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit fancier though. Oh, why are you trying to outshow me, man? Um, that's definitely not what. <laughs> wow. Oh, see? Oh. <laughs> it's just block that it's just really okay. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Okay, listen, everyone, if you have anything to share, please don't be afraid to share it. I'd love to see everybody's drawings, but still don't be afraid to comment. 
Uh, reach out to us on Twitch and uh, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I wonder if my mom and dad are watching this. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? Mr. B, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have you seen Woke yet? I have seen Woke. Very good show. Have you seen Woke yet? Uh, I am so woke. Uh, I have totally seen Woke. I actually watched one through three and then waited a day, watched episode four, my favorite, and then uh, uh, and then watched the, the last ones, uh, you know, uh, uh, two days later or something like that. Uh, loved it. Um, so it was created by uh, 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 Keith Knight, and uh, I've known him for a long time. Uh, uh, he's an old school foundation from San Francisco way back in the day. I went to Comic Cons all the time, and I feel like just as you would go there and pay $20 for nachos, you would always see Keith Knight there. I feel like I need to ask this dude. I feel like I don't even remember how we met, but I know that like I at Comic Con and 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 me and him, you know, uh, uh, that was a huge that was a huge thing. That every time I saw him, uh, he was there, and and I associate with him with that. And at the same time, back then, that's what he was. And uh, in San Francisco, there weren't many black cartoonists. Maybe me and him. I have no idea. But uh, 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 I am fucking honored. Oops, sorry, I said a bad word. Uh, man, I'm trying so hard, Mr. How B. How long you know Keith for? Mr. B, you're it's supposed okay. to screw me. It's as we can edit this out, hopefully. How long have you known Keith for? Uh, I've known Keith for. I, I feel it's like been over 20 years. I feel like it's been a long time. So, uh, uh, so listen, uh, I am super lucky to uh, have had his uh, had my work in his show. Uh, his show is kind of. Uh, uh, really brilliant, actually. I was really surprised. I was really laughing. Uh, uh, super amazing. I'm super proud uh, uh, to be associated in his dream because uh, I know this is something that he's been working on for a long time. And just like with any artist, uh, any vision that you have, as much as you think it's going to happen in 10 years, it usually happens in like 20 to 25. Okay, years. Okay, so uh, uh, you know what? Can we, we I want to give like a little. Uh, uh, a preface to the audience here. Uh, uh, Roy, can you play the trailer? You're on your way to the top. Hey. Newspapers, TV show, movie deal. It's just the cartoonist. Why is it that as people of color are always having to stand for something? Because the world's a racist place. And that's why I keep it light. Keep it light. Keep it light. Stop it! Don't Stop move. It. Stop oh, resisting. Yes. Copy that. Says in the suspect. Mr. Policeman did a numb on you. Now you be his. No, no, no. I'm seeing things. Houston, we have a problem. Man, you woke. Once your eyes are open, you can't unsee. I don't think OJ did it. What's your opinion on reparations? Yeah. This is all wrong. I tell you what's wrong. Those man bun, co opting, ginger fine devils. You know what to do. I ain't got time. <laughs> Better go and watch it. This is that moment in the Matrix. Do I take the red pill or the blue pill? I've got both in my room if you want to experiment. I ain't got time. I'm gonna talk shit. Cause I'm either in my con or my golf shit. You know what? Yeah. Loved it. Uh, Listen, everyone, I am super honored that he could come on episode two, Keith Knight. I, I, I'm just honored. It's super great. Uh, um, let's 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 bring this dude on. Let's talk to him. I have a million questions. Keith Knight. And now a special guest. What's up? Keith Knight, everyone. <laughs> Excellent. This is amazing. This is, this is amazing. This is, is this a, I can't even tell if this is a kid's show and then you're, and, but then you swore and, and you know, you know, know listen, I hit my here's head. the deal, okay? It is like Pee Wee Herman. We will realize that this wasn't a kid's show a long time from now. But for right now, it's a kid's <laughs> show. I did swear, but we're going to edit that out. And you know what, Mr. B, I'm gonna blame it on him. But Keith Knight, listen, I'm gonna start out by saying, listen, thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I loved, you have to understand, here, I'm gonna come from, from this perspective, okay? So I, 
I'm a commercial artist. I do stuff that is super commercial, hyper commercial. There's no way that I would ever have an opportunity to have a voice or say anything that is rebellious or uh, you know, political in any way. Uh, but I do have occasion on Valencia Street, uh, Clarion Alley, to be able to have this mural, this section right there, uh, right at the entrance where I have this bear that I that I I, I change and I rotate with all these uh, very kind of um, political messages that are of the moment, that are relatively ephemeral. And so uh, you actually took these pictures and put them into your 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 show, which is like irony and it's so awesome because that's in a lot of ways the same story that is uh, pursued in your show and so uh, 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 I'm so happy and grateful and uh, um, I appreciate it so much and uh, um, again I'm gonna say it man uh, to be part of your dream is uh, is a great honor um, so thank you Th thank you I mean thank you for uh, allowing us to use your work and and I love your work because it's so subversive. And um, so it was super important for me when they were like, you know, when they thought about, uh, you know, can you get any San Francisco artists? And the first person I thought was you. And uh, so it was super important for us to have it in the show. So thank you. I, I totally appreciate it. And right on, right on. Yeah. Uh, just believe me, it's, it's, it's been a, a dream come true yeah, and like you said, you know, I said it the other day, I'm like a, a 30 year overnight success. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. You, you have to be, but, people have to be aware yeah. of that, you know, like um, it's, it's been nothing great. comes quickly and everything is work. And especially, especially for us, us young black men, that's just going to be a thing, man. We got to work really hard uh, to get out there. Mr. B, will you mm -hmm. ask this man some questions? Absolutely, Keith. I just want to thank you again for being with us and being on the show. Congratulations also to you for all the wonderful, hopefully, success you've had uh, as of recent, too. Uh, the first question I have for you, though, could you tell us a little, a little bit about yourself and about your art? Can I drink my beer before I answer that? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to drink my lemonade because this is a kid's show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm on the East you know, Coast, so this is late, you night. Know. late night. Oh, I love that bear. I love that bear. So, yeah, my work is, you know, I've been doing, I'm, I'm mostly known for the K Chronicles, which is my autobiographical comic strip that, uh, semi autobiographical that I've been doing for a million years. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's my way of sort of commenting, uh, comment commenting on anything or everything that's happening on uh in politics uh and you know social issues uh anything that's happening in my life and um and then i do uh, a strip called think which is my single panel uh that's that's an example of it and that's i comment on socio-political stuff uh stuff that affects communities of color and then um you know i i've done a lot of stuff on police brutality um, I've done a lot of stuff on, um, currently I tour a slideshow on America's racial illiteracy because I really feel like, you know, we don't teach our, our, our citizens, you know, they, they, they teach, they don't, we don't teach black history. We, we think black history is like something that should, we should only celebrate on in February and we should celebrate the fame the same five stories over and over again and we need to we need to teach what this country this country was founded on the oppression so we need to come to terms with the fact that you know what could you do with you know 260 years of, of free labor what could you build and so we need to come to terms with that and in order for us to move forward or as a nation, like we need to, we need to acknowledge it. We need to make amends for it, and and that's the way we're going to move forward. Um, and I just try to do it. I try to, I try to turn people on to it in a way that uses humor and uh, uses storytelling, and you know, and it's accessible yet subversive. I love it, man. You're an artist. You 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 have this uh, avail availability to uh, uh, sum up something really quick, 
I try. It's a, literally, it's a muscle that you have to develop. Um, and uh, you were born with it, my friend. Uh, uh, Roy, let's just go straight to Keith. Uh, go ahead, Mr. B. Blow Definitely. Keith up. Could you also, Keith, tell us about your show, Woke? Oh, sure. Um, so, Woke, yeah. You know, I moved, I left San Francisco in 2007 because I watched basically the newspaper industry implode. And I was like, if I don't get some income some other way. So I was like, let's, let's, let's move down to LA, see if I can develop this stuff into a TV show. And so I went down there and the first three years I didn't have a car. So uh, I, I didn't meet anybody, but I inherited a car. And then um, I was able to meet a great producer who turned me on to another producer, my, my stories, my comics, um, they set up a meeting with Hulu, a bunch of other places. We pitched the show. Hulu loved it. Um, and then I worked with Marshall Todd, who was an experienced writer. He co-wrote Barbershop, the original Barbershop film. And we just, um, you know, we just, we came up with a really good script. Um, that's my, those are my, tw uh, my twin sister, my younger sister on set. And, uh, I have a, I have a, a secret, uh, role in the show. I was the koala. And I get I got to punch my own character in the face. Um, you so were that's... great, man. You really <laughs> articulated when you put your head out there. Like I was I was really feeling it. You're you're a twin, huh? I am a twin. I, I I'm a, a twin, twin too. I'm a twin too. Shout and, out to uh, yeah. Sari. Uh, everybody calls her Re Norris. She's probably listening. <laughs> Excellent. That's the, uh, so you have a twin sister too. I do have a I'm, twin I'm, sister. I'm, yeah. I'm about to. I'm about to, um, I challenged my twin sister on some NPR show that's going to air this weekend. Oh. And we, uh, it's, a, it's a quiz show. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to give anything away, but um, I okay. talked a lot of trash. I talked okay. a lot of trash and I, I failed miserably. I lost. <laughs> I was bad. I was terrible. Okay. So. Right on. So you're going to plug that? That's coming out when? Oh, that's coming out this weekend, but that that that's here, no there. Let's, I, you know, I, I'm more importantly the show. Let's talk about the show. No, uh, here's the thing. I don't know much about Hulu's ratings, but I do know that people have to watch all of the episodes. That's the way we'll get a second season. Is if you okay. like, if people just watch a couple of episodes and don't watch anymore, then that's a bad sign. You got to watch all the way through. And and then you'll see me as dressed as the koala bear in episode seven, so and eight. So there you go. Uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying. There's so much to tackle when it comes to gentrification in San Francisco and being an artist that is trying to say something, but at the at the same time make a living. There's literally millions of things that you can like work off that so i feel like each episode is just kind of like um exploring some some massive focus of all that and uh when it comes to the end uh all i can say is because i don't want to spoil it and we don't want any spoilers all i can say is i feel that like it is a dream for a black cartoonist i feel like at the end of the episode any if you are a black cartoonist that is heaven do you know what I'm saying? That's just my personal opinion. All right, Mr. B, I don't want to take you away. Go ahead. Let's ask more questions. Devin, Devin actually has a really good question, too. Is there ever a point you, where you felt discouraged? And what did you do to stay confident about your project? I actually really like that question, Devin. Uh, about the pro, uh, about the show, um, you know, it's funny. Um, I, I Since I was so naive and new to it, I never felt discouraged. So um, it was funny because my writing partner, Marshall Todd, he, he, he's been in the business for, you know, 15 years. So he was, he was the cynical one. And so uh, I just never knew, like, he, he kept on saying to me, like, I've never gone this far before. I've never made it this far before in television. And I, I'm like, I, you know, I, I didn't know any better. And, uh, and he's like, Every time we were going to have a big meeting, he'd say, this is where they pull the plug. 
this is where they pull the plug. And I was like, I, I don't know. I, I think we have a good shot. At it. <laughs> and so I knew we were going to make it once he jumped on board. Cause then he was like, we're going to have a show. We're going to have a show. So um, all along the way, I just felt like, um, I just felt like as long as I was trying to create a show that I would watch, I never felt discouraged from it. Um, I just, I just kept on moving forward and it was just like, you, you know how when people sell something to Hollywood and Hollywood takes it and then destroys it, makes a mess out of it. And yeah. then the artist gets all mad and they're like, you know, they, they took it away and they screwed it up. Like for me, it was so important to, if I was going to sell it to Hollywood that I would be a part of it and work on it. So if it got screwed up, I would be there to see how it gets screwed up. So I couldn't, so I wouldn't be the bitter guy. Like I was there, I helped screw it up, you know? So um, it was important for me to be a, a, a big part of it. And I, I feel like I didn't screw it up, which, uh, and we, and I don't think Hollywood screwed it up. It, it has it's my great, sensibility, dude. so. I'm, very you can happy. tell literally you you drew on the last frame on the last episode i could see your penmanship so you had you're watching every moment of this uh i could totally tell yeah uh sorry mr b go ahead oh, you're good. now this is a good question too did you create toast and butter just for the show or was it something that existed before i i did i did create toast and butter just for the show um, we were sitting there going, I was, I was sitting there going, what sort of milk toast comic strip I could come up with. And so I was <laughs> like, toast, there is toast and butter. Like, that's it. Like, and, and, and it came so fast that I was trying to think of other things I could come up with, but no other did all these toast and butter strips that aren't even in the show. Like I figure, if this show fails, I I will never do a daily again. It was it was so hardcore and uh, too stressful. Nice. Um, and then also, how involved were you with the animation process? Um, I was, you know, I I wasn't I wasn't involved in the animation itself, but I was involved in designing uh, the characters. So it was a lot of you know sending sketches. And honing the designs of the uh, when the, I, I would get animation, I would say, "Oh, could you, you know, work with the eyes, make it a little different? Could you make the mouth so it's always like to the mm. so side because a lot of my drawings are always to the side." So, um, Stupid Buddy uh, was the company that did the animation, and they did such a tremendous job. Um, and credit to Mo Marable, the director, who he wanted he didn't want 2d animation he wanted a lot of puppetry and he wanted a lot of just stuff that like real bottles and stuff like that and um i mm -hmm. think it really elevated it i think if it was flat 2d animation it would have cheapened it a little bit and um so i mean i i think they did such a great job it's it's so fun it that was really actually good. one of my questions um, I, I wondered about the eyes. Uh, the, uh, you basically got the upper echelon of stop motion because that's like chicken robot. Those dudes make chicken robot. So yeah. uh, uh, that's not a bad company to be associated with. But uh, that was my biggest question. You know what I'm saying? Like the mouth is definitely your style, but the eyes totally aren't in a lot of ways. That being said, everything that it's on is actually real object. So I feel yeah. having that half and half might have actually been probably a, a smarter choice. Yeah, I think so. Um, I like I love what they did with with the it, it just it's, you know, it, it has the essence of what what my work is, but it, it's a it's its own thing. It's its own uh, it's it's its own creation, and so I, I I think they did such a an amazing job, and it's just adds to the magical realism of it all. And um, I, I I my favorite thing is how each of the animation manifests itself, 
and um, and you just don't know where it's coming. So that was part of the fun. Right on, right on. What you got for him, Mr. B? No, I just so since we're talking about your art too, um, your process. Do you go straight sharpie or do you pencil stuff out first? Oh, I'm dying yeah, to know no, this I, question. I, I no, I definitely pencil stuff out first. Yeah, like I'm I'm old school. Uh, pencil, paper, gummy eraser. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, when you were drawing the bear, the bears, um, I, I was just drawing. I'm doing a strip about me being the koala bear. So that that's my latest K Chronicle strip. Is uh, uh -huh. is is because uh, it's just a funny story. Like I, I couldn't see a thing in that bear outfit, and um, and so when they had me swinging at Lamorne, like I couldn't see a thing. And um, I just remember hearing somebody say, after I tried it, <laughs> they said, I don't think he's ever thrown a punch in his life. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that true. being said, have you? I don't think I have. <laughs> I don't think Good. I, think I have. <laughs> uh, nice. And speaking about the dressing too, you said you dress up in a koala suit. I was wondering how much of the main character's style has been influenced by your real life style. Can you tell me about that? The threads. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, he definitely captured a lot of my. I was like, my time in San Francisco was like. It was my graduate school and but and I only meant to come to San Francisco for like five years, but I stayed here for 16 and uh, and I had an amazing like every day to me in San Francisco was magical. Like him at the beginning of the show, just walking through the streets. <laughs> that was me every day. Like I, 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 I just had the greatest time there and um, and. You know, and after 10 years, I was hanging up posters uh, in the Richmond district. And uh, um, and this cop showed up behind me and said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm hanging up posters and I have this stapler. I'm going to put it down on the ground. And it turned out that I fit the description of someone who was robbing houses in the neighborhood. And that description was six foot tall, black male. And that's it. Now. You know, it's a lot more dramatized in the show. I didn't get tackled or anything like that, but a ton of cops showed up from all over the place. And um, and the thing that really happened that's in the show too is my white roommate got off the bus, got off the Fulton bus and ran at the cops in a way that I've never seen anybody run at the cops before. And he got up in their faces and was screaming at them and going nuts. And that's the thing that traumatized me was like, like they were treating him like, like he was their manager, like yeah. in a way that if he had been bl black or brown, he would have been tased. He would. It's been clear tased. in the show. Yeah, and I mean, and he is like. Gunther, Gunther is yeah. like boom, 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 and you're like on the ground, and this dude is like, and the cops are not even reacting. Um, that that and was then, not lost then, uh, on me at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 the line after is like, I can't believe they did us like that. Like, yeah. that's <laughs> <laughs> There's actually some pretty amazing solid lines uh, in this show. Hey, listen, Keith. Uh, listen, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I'm going to wrap this up. I've got I've got two more questions for you. I'm going to throw money on it right now that you definitely don't have shoes on right now. Am I correct? Don't have shoes on? Yeah, of course I don't have shoes on. Of course, on. You're, in, you're in the house. Yeah, I I'm asked this house. to, you know, to, uh, you know I, I'm just curious, you know, because we're in our house and I've heard this. I've watched a couple of interviews. I'm assuming you have pants on, but I've awfully often seen you say that you didn't. I, I actually do have pants on right now, but yes, I didn't have pants Thank on. Thank you for honoring us in that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, Brendan, I, I'm assuming, I know you have socks on. I know you. I teach with you day. all the time. You got yeah. socks on. I'm in my studio. I got Jordans because that's just all I wear. But uh, Keith Knight, Thank you. I got one last question. You got to leave me with one last question. 
buddy, my man, how has your life changed now that this how, is going on? How has my life changed? Um, I will say this. I, I, I'm not, you know, I don't have to worry that much about money anymore. <laughs> so yes. That's what that's one thing, but, awesome. um, um, and, and really like the amount of people that are just discovering my work for the first time. Um, I have so many orders on my website that, and it's great because my kids fill, fill out all the envelopes and they fill all the orders. And there you uh, go. Free child yeah. labor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so really my kids are working harder than they, they've ever worked. And, and that's great. Like that makes me completely happy because they're homeschooled even before all this COVID stuff. They were. Yeah. You were ahead of all that, huh? Uh Oh, I, I, it, it, it's that's so what cool. Roy thinks about homeschooling. Hey, blue bear. What do you think about homeschooling? It's lovely. Yeah, it is lovely. And, and, and yeah, it's funny because so many people are now asking that the people that like made fun of us before, are like, how do you do it? How do you get? I don't know how to yeah. do it. And, and um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. congratulations, dude. I, I, I'm so unbelievably happy for you, man. Uh, listen, yeah. buddy, stay safe. Love to your family. Thank you again for bringing this show. Because you know what, buddy? You got lucky that all of a sudden the world aligned exactly with this show. And it's what everybody needs right now. And, uh, um, you know, that's just the stars. But at the same time, everything takes forever. Huh, my man? It, it kills me because, the, you know, I wanted, I wanted to come to San Francisco, play a reunion show with the prophets, have your art there, just hang out with you, and just celebrate with the in the and with everybody. And instead, the world is burning. <laughs> the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And it's like you know. And I sit there and go, well, you know, like. Of course, that's going to happen. If I get a TV show, the world is going to end. So there, there it is. Uh, yeah, but but you know what, man? It just hit us at a such such a great time, and I don't know if it would have had an impact like it does now if the world wasn't the way it is. And so, listen, man. In a lot of ways, I feel like it was meant to be because I know for sure that you were finishing production like what end of March. Oh, we know we finished February 28th. Like it's oh, wow. February 28th. And then like a week and a half later, everything just shut down. So we lucked out, man. The, the world out. was telling us something then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I believe that. So listen, man, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you so much, T. Thank, Thank you so much. Keith. I appreciate, appreciate it, man. You. I'm so I'm so happy for you, man. It feels good, dude. And uh, I'm proud of you, man. And uh, San Francisco, we're we're rooting for you, man. You know, we you always have a place here, buddy. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot. And seriously, man, I'm I'm proud of you and what you've built, man. I I, I truly appreciate appreciate everything that you do. Right on, right on, man. Thank you so much, man. Good night, All right. okay. All right, Mr. B. Take it easy, Keith. Thank you again, man. All right. All right. Peace. Whew, man, I'm hyped. That's nice. Wow. That was awesome. Uh, so listen, everyone, I think like if we're going to take anything away from that, I think that it's really important that you watch all of the episodes of Woke so we can get a season two. We can get a season two. You know what? I'm invested. I love that dude. He's part of my life. So, you know, uh, I'm connected with it. So listen, you know, if you need to get a bunch of devices and play Woke all simultaneously at the same time, as long as you get to episode eight, personally, my favorite is episode four and eight, actually. But uh, I love the show, so I'm super proud. Um, listen, Mr. B, mm -hmm. I'm on pins and needles waiting to see how this story's going to end. Oh, so man. We we gotta see it through. We you know what? I think it's story time again. Life at the strange fruit farm was great for the rabbits, but not very great for the blue bears. Each night, the boss rabbit weighs the amount of seeds each blue bear harvested. 
The amount of seeds determines how much each blue bear will get to eat that night for dinner and how good the boss rabbit will treat them. One day, some concerned rabbits showed up to the farm declaring that making the blue bears work for free and harvesting the seeds is wrong. The boss rabbit and his family very much disagreed. The boss rabbit got all his fellow supportive rabbits together to fight for the right to keep their blue bears. Some of the blue bears teamed up with the concerned rabbits to fight for their freedom. The concerned rabbits, with a lot of help from the blue bears, defeated the boss rabbit and the other disagreeing farmer rabbits. All the citizens of Rabbit World will now treat the blue bears like rabbits so that everyone could live together in Rabbit World and get along. The rabbits of Rabbit World decided to pass a law saying that you can treat blue bears badly unless they don't have their ears on. Every blue bear in Rabbit World was given a nice new set of rabbit ears all their own. After that, life in Rabbit World was pretty sad and frustrating for the blue bears. As much as they wanted to be a part of Rabbit World, the rabbits kept to themselves and many banned the blue bears from even entering restaurants and stores. Many blue bears eventually became frustrated and burned their rabbit ears in protest of the law. In solidarity, some rabbits started supporting the blue bears' actions. Soon, the blue bears got together and created signs, shutting down streets in Rabbit World and protesting to be treated as equals. Many rabbits in Rabbit World believed that the blue bears were wrong and needed to go back to Barrica where they came from. To be continued. All right. Well, I'm excited to see how that story will end. Okay, everyone. Uh, you know what? I had a good time. Mr. B, how do you think this went? I think it went really well. I just, I just am very grateful and appreciative of everybody that tuned in and hung out with us. And hopefully you guys got something out of it like we did. Yeah. Again, you know, this is my painting. Uh, this was uh, my art. This is what I chose to do. You know, we're in a time right now that's like really hard. And it's a time that uh, we should all should be sharing our talents. So I want to share my talents, but at the same time, I want to bring people on so I can learn from them. Like Keith, I learned so much. Uh, that was incredible. So I'm super, uh, super honored that he uh, decided to show up. Uh, so listen, everybody, I want to thank uh, Annabelle. Annabelle, can you come back in here for a second? Annabelle, hey, thank you. Hey, 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 hey. That was so great. I'm like, I can't believe I was back behind the scenes watching all of this. You've gone beyond your regular job this 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 past month because I know you've had to do this show too. Plus all the all the education stuff that you're doing for the academy. Thank you so much, Mr. B. Thank you so much. You actually have not done that much uh, for this show, but you've been teaching kids nonstop. So I'll give you credit on that one. Uh, this show has mostly been pulled by Annabelle and Roy Robles. He does not want to show himself. He's like Daft Punk. He makes the dope music, but nobody wants to see him. Uh, he's gonna stay like that. But Roy's been with me uh, for a minute. He's DJed or for film produced. Oh, snap. Yes. Yes. Guess what that means. Listen, y'all, check this out. Okay, my prediction is this. Halloween, it ain't happening, yo. So listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to try to make a virtual Halloween. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to have the art show three more times, try to amp it up, see if we can kind of build an audience and have like a really dope, Halloween party that's virtual. <laughs> we got some good ideas, so we're trying. So hang with us. Uh, I hate to say it because that's what every YouTube channel says. Subscribe below or give it a <laughs> high five or hit it with your elbow, whatever. Thank you if you wanna be part of what we got coming up. But you know, we're trying to do costumes. We're trying to scare people. Uh, we're trying to do all kinds of stuff. So trying that's to our dance? We're trying to we're trying to dance. That's right. Oh my gosh, we have a good DJ coming up too. So it's gonna be a good time. But we're building it slowly, y'all. We're building it slowly. Uh, so show up. We're gonna do this once a month. So we'll be back next month. Uh, you know what? Uh, I want to say uh, uh, thank Ooze Element again, and I want to thank Roy Robles again. Okay, everybody, thank you. My mom and dad, I love you all out there in Phoenix. Say say. Marcelino. Right. Uh, oh my. Marcelino. 
Marcelino Rosario, he edited all our videos. I taught this kid when he was like eight years old. He's been teaching, learning cartoons. Now he's 18, 19 years old. Uh, he's going to film school. He edited all this stuff. Uh, I am so honored to have people in my lives that have been with me uh, since they've been little youngsters. Uh, so I'm super honored to have these people in my life. Uh, Nino, he's been doing great. Uh, we've been to put a lot on his plate and he's delivered and had it in time on time. And he's a talented dude. So I want to thank him. Thank you, Annabelle. Again, you're doing such a great hey, job. Although I've been on you this week, I've been complaining. Uh, Mr. B, nice job, buddy. Thank, thank you, you so much. Do you have any, uh, uh, do you have any Roy, snacks for me? What's oh, up? Okay. Do you have any snacks for me, buddy, Chess? Anything to eat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything to eat what? for any snacks? He's, hu he's hungry. Oh, you have snacks? I have snacks, dude. Oh, I, I, was, snacks. I don't have any snacks. Do you have any? I have snacks right here. Oh, okay. Do you want you, are you sure? Yeah, throw them over. I, that should the, be the Trader Joe's pretzels. Oh, we, don't so do, uh, we don't want to do sponsorships here. Okay, dude. <laughs> yeah, not quite yet. Oh, thank you so much, dude. I am so excited. I appreciate it. No worries, dude. No worries, dude. Get yourself, like, a little energy. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. Let's get this outro getting out of here. Thank you so much. It was super fun. We'll see you guys next time. Stay safe. See you later.